Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Cheryl. Thank you very much for joining me. If you are a new viewer, hello, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, hello, welcome back. This is a bookish video as you can tell by the title of the video. That's my grandma in the background. She passed away a few years ago. Um, <laughs> I got no books in the background. I apologize. I do have a stack of books here. So this is a bookish video, so if you're here for craftiness, I'm sorry, this video may not be for you. Feel free to skip it if you wish. So as you can tell from the title of this video, this is going to be a talk about books that I still think about months and years after reading. First of all, I'm sorry for the glare in my glasses. I have to wear glasses. I'm sorry. I know it's not the best lighting and the glare and everything. I apologize, but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> so anyways, um, this book is, or this video, I'm really out of practice today. I don't know why. I am so tired. It's Sunday morning or Sunday. It's almost Sunday afternoon. It's almost noon time, October 25th. 2020 and I'm still wearing my pajamas pajamas. I mean, I've got a shirt on isn't this a cute shirt. I got it from Walmart I got pajama bottoms on Sign note my stepmom buys me new pajamas every Christmas like every Christmas Eve I get new pajamas, which I love because I can't afford to buy them all the time So I love that and second I love it because it's tradition It's something she did with her kids and it's something she does with me and I love it because my mom never did that tradition, so I love that she's doing it. It's kind of special between my stepmom and me and not something that's shadowed over by my mom before she died kind of thing. So it's special, so I love it. And she has great taste in PJs. <laughs> so anyways, I'm wearing PJ bottoms, so I'm nice and comfortable. I've got some tea in my, um, what mug am I using? Happy Pumpkin Spice Latte season. I've got some maple chai tea, I believe. No, it's not maple chai. I think this is, um, I think this is butterscotch chai from David's Tea. Delicious. <laughs> okay, let's get down to business because these are books that I still think of basically on a daily basis every, like, years after I've read it. Sometimes months, but years. Okay, that didn't make sense. Months, sometimes years is what I meant to say. So the first book I have here is a book I read this year, probably about four or five months ago, and that is Sisters Ever. These are just the books I own, by the way. These aren't ebooks or audiobooks that I've had or books from the library. These are just books I've owned. There's many more I still think of that are from the library. This is Sisterhood Everlasting by Anne Bashers. I don't know if I pronounced her last name right. I apologize if I said it wrong. But this is the continuing story of Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. So this is the fifth book after the main series. And this book broke me. It was so good. I can see the price in there. <laughs> I think I got this from the... No, I did buy this. It was only $4. I mean, that's a good price. <laughs> but, um... This book was my favorite out of the whole series. I do love the whole series, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. But this one broke me because it deals with death. And it, <laughs> oh my heart, it was broken. It was a really good story. Um, the twist and the the twists and turns and the, the ending was just amazing. If you love The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, um, <clears throat> you should really read this. It's so good. I didn't even know this book existed till a few months ago. And um, so I'm very excited. I was very excited to read it. Um, I guess technically you don't need to read the first four books to read this book, but it does have the same characters. So you get a bit of background from the other books. But technically this can be a standalone, I guess. But if you want to know more about the characters, you should read the first four books. <clears throat> um, my apologies, my throat's all croggy. I don't know why I say croggy all the time. It's like froggy and croaky put together, and I say croggy, and I try not to say it, but it always comes out croggy. I don't know why. Anyways, so this book was so good. It was very sad. It was very, the ending was very satisfying, and, and it was, um, it made me cry. It really did. I listened to this on audio before I read it. And the audiobook was so good, and I just bawled. I listened to, actually, the first time I listened to it was at, um, when I was at my parents' place. 
um, in Texada Island for about a month and a half when the pandemic first started, back in like April or May or something like that. It's so good. Next book. This one I think you'll see me see, you'll see coming because I talk about this book quite often in my videos and that is Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. <sighs> I still think about this book. Now, I know that's the purpose of this video, but I think of this book on a daily basis. Like, it, the twists and turns, the, um, oh my goodness, it is just such, this is, a, first of all, this is just a contemporary novel. Um, I would consider it adult, because they're in their 20s, but maybe new adult, but there's no, like, sex scenes in it, so I know a lot of new adults have sex scenes in it. This one doesn't, but it's that age group, college age group. No, actually, I think they're in the 30s. I think they're in the 30s in this book. So, adult. No sex scenes, though. Very good. This book. Um, it was so good. I listened to this on audio before I bought it. And um, I stayed up until like 5 in the morning listening to it. Because I could not stop listening to it. It was so good. This is a suspense novel. Or a thriller, I guess you could call it. Psychological thriller. And, oh my gosh. This book, oh my gosh, it was so good. The the uh, plot twist in the middle of the book, I did not see that coming. That just shocked the heck out of me. It was really weird. I did not see it coming. It got me so... <laughs> It got me so messed up in my mind. I'm like, oh my goodness. I had to turn off the audiobook for a few minutes and just sit there and go, wow. Wow. I, that's all I could say was wow. And then the ending, the ending, the last sentence. I think it's the last sentence. I won't read it to you because it's kind of a spoiler, but... Um... Uh, no, it's not the last sentence. It's, but the last paragraph, too, is just amazing. But it's, mm, I think it's the last, no. Okay, I thought it was the last sentence, but it's not. Um, but still, the last paragraph's really good, too. And it's just so good. It leaves, it has an open ending. So if you don't like those, you may not like this book because you really don't know what happened after you're finished reading it. You're like, what just happened? What did I just read? It's so confusing. It's not confusing to follow. It's just confusing in what really happened. You don't know what really happened. So it's like, oh my gosh. And just trigger warnings, there is a rape in here that is very um, described very well. Um, I don't know if it was necessary for the book, but it did, it did make it a bit more real to me, um, and where the rape happens and under the circumstances, I have been there and I have dealt with that particular circumstance. So when reading it, when listening to an audio, I had to turn it off for about an hour because I just, I freaked out. It was something I'm, I'm personally afraid of, personally um, thinking of when I'm in that situation. I can't say where and what situation it is because it would be a big spoiler. But um, if you've read this book, you know where the rape happens and under what circumstances. And I've been in that place and I've been in that circumstance and it, apart from the actual rape happening, I wasn't raped. But the circumstance in which the rape happens, I have had, I have uh, been in, and it's something that has scared me. And when I read it, I just freaked out. <laughs> I wasn't raped then, but it could have happened, and I was very scared <laughs> when I read it. I was like, "Wow, that really could have happened to me." And it's, 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 yeah. I mean, it's a bit kind of like unrealistic for me to think it would happen to me because the place would happen is usually safe, but. Still, it bothered me. <laughs> it was very hard to read. Apart from that, this book was amazing. I loved it. Five stars. I loved it. This one, by the way, was five stars as well. 
Then I have this book I think of on a regular basis as well, and that is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This book is, okay, so it's a thrill. It's, uh, I don't know if it's considered a mystery or a thriller. I think it's considered a YA thriller. I wouldn't call it YA because the character in here is older. She is like 19 or something, so I wouldn't call it YA, but it is considered YA. And um, this book is about a young lady whose sister had gone missing and killed um, a couple years before, and suddenly she's missing, and so we follow her as she's trying to, um, in her journey to basically get revenge for her sister's death. And we also follow um, a podcast, uh, and in the audiobook, it's amazing, the audiobook's amazing, it sounds like a real podcast, so we get some chapters from a podcast where the guy is talking and it's got interviews and everything, and he's following the trail of Sadie, trying to find her and find out what happened to Sadie. This book deals with some very heavy issues. It deals with pedophilia and uh, sexual assault uh, of kids, um, uh, kitty porn, things like that. This book, though, it was so well written. Um, Again, there's an open ending. I, there's a theme here. I like open endings, I think, where you don't know exactly what's going to happen. There's no real ending to it. You don't know for sure if it's a happily ever after or if not. This has that kind of ending. And if you don't like those, you won't like this book. But um, this book, um, I didn't think I'd like it, but I loved it. I listened to the audiobook twice now, and I've read this book once or twice as well from this physical copy. It's, I don't know how to describe it, how it made me feel. It made me feel angry on how these girls were treated and how they grew up. Um, they grew up too fast, how the death of her sister happened. Um, it was a murder and, um, this book is talking about her getting revenge for her sister's murder, and um, it's, I don't think that's a spoiler, because basically you know that's what she's going to be doing. Um, it talks about her life since her sister's death, and how it's hurt her and how it's overcome her, her thoughts, and it's just an amazing book. And the podcast part of it is done really well. If you listen to the audiobook, it sounds like a real podcast. It's got people, like when they're talking about other people talking, they have their own narrator, so they can say, so-and-so said this, and then it would have that person talking, and it would sound like it would be a different narrator. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I recommend the audiobook, but if you don't have the audiobook, this book is really good to read physically as well. Think about it a lot. Then I had to mention these two, because the third book is, I think it's out now. I'm waiting for my pre-order to come in. It should be in next week. And that is the Nevermore series by um, Jessica Townsend. How come I forgot that? So this is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow, and this is Wonder Smith, The Calling of Morgan Crow. And the third book is called Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow, I believe. So these books are middle grade. Um, if you like Harry Potter, you'll like this. If you like Alice in Wonderland, you'll like this. This is um, a book about a girl who is turning 11 in the first book. And she is a quote-unquote cursed child. So as cursed children, they die when they turn 11. So uh, just before she turns 11, this guy from another world called Nevermore shows up, his name is Jupiter North, best character in the world, shows up and takes her to Nevermore where she can live. And in Nevermore there are, there's magic and there's um, wonderful people and there's, she goes on some trials to enter the Wondersmith Academy or the Wondersmith Society and um, that, that is like a big thing. I forget all the details, but it was really good. And then Wondersmith is where she goes to school to learn how to deal with what is called her knack. And that's basically her special powers. And this is more of a um, boarding school type 
story, and you've got a talking cat, and <laughs> I love the talking cat, and I love this book. These books are so good. So the third book, Holopox, is coming out. I think it's already out now. It just came out last week, I think, so I'm waiting for my pre-order to come in, and then I'm going to read it this month, or in November, so very excited. And then this series, I think about all the time. And I brought the whole series because I couldn't decide which book of them I think about the most because I basically think of the whole series. And that is the trilogy Scythe by Neil Shusterman. So there's Scythe, Thunderhead, and The Toll. This series is, I know I'm saying this all the time, but it's so good. Oh, what award did they win? Uh, the Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. It's an honor book. Very good. Neil Schusterman, um, I've never read any of his books before reading this. I got this as a um, booktubers made me do it kind of thing because I was watching everybody talk about it on booktube. <clears throat> Hold on, I gotta take a drink. I got a piece of stuff stuck on it. Um... So, book two was reading it all the time, so I bought it, and I loved it, and I immediately went and bought the other two books. I've been tabbing it as a reread. Scythe. What can I say about Scythe? This was a wild ride. So, Scythe is basically the first book in the, in the trilogy, and it's basically about um, two teenagers who are training to be size. And a scythe is a person, it takes place in the future, in a utopian world or dystopian world, whatever you want to look at it, where death is conquered, nobody dies. Their old age is conquered, you can like relive your life, and um, you can't die, there's no diseases, if you die you can be revived, that kind of thing. So to control the population, they have size, and size are the only people who can actually kill you. And so they go around and they pick people um, to kill to control the population. And the first book is about two people, Citra and Rowan, and they are chosen to be apprentices, apprentices uh, to a scythe and they compete to be a scythe and neither of them really want to be a scythe and it's just so good and then the second book which is Thunderhead this book deals with the AI that's kind of God kind of in the control so it's it's named um, Thunderhead so it's kind of like the cloud kind of thing in computers but it's basically God so and then the toll is the conclusion. And I love these books. Absolutely love these books. They are so good. I recommend them. They are um, YA dystopian, utopian. I kind of think they're more utopian, but a lot of people call them dystopian. So if you don't know the difference between dystopian and utopian, dystopian's in a future where things are worse than what they are now. Utopian is where it's better than what they are now. Take it as you will. Anyways, these are the books I have been wanting to reread and that I think about quite often. I'm just getting the other books. So, yeah. What books do you love that you still think about every day? I think about these books. And Anna Green Gables. I always think of Anna Green Gables. I don't know why I didn't put that on this list. Anyways, <laughs> that's it. I hope you have a great day. Have a great weekend. God bless you and all you do. Bye, guys.